This is the second video in the test one review and it covers material on operations and composition of functions, angles, and trig functions. Our first problem deals with operations of functions. So we're given a graph with the line f of x and g of x and we're asked to find f plus g of 2 and f divided by g of 2. Now when you're dealing with operations of functions, you can treat your two functions separately and then perform the operation on them. So when we're looking at f plus g of 2, first we want to find f of 2 and g of 2. And once we find those values, we can perform the operation. So looking at our graph, f of 2 is approximately 2, and g of 2 is approximately negative 1. So f plus g of 2 can be treated as f of 2 plus g of 2 which is 2 plus negative 1, which just equals positive 1. And then f over g of 2 can be treated as f of 2 divided by g of 2, or 2 divided by negative 1, which gives us an answer of negative 2. So remember, you want to find your individual function values, and then you can perform the operation. Our second problem deals with composition of functions. We're given the function f of x equals 5x squared plus 2 and g of x equals 6x minus 4. We're then asked to find f of g of x and g of f of x. So when we're doing composition of functions, we're going to plug our second function into all x's for the first function. So for f of g of x, we're going to take our function for f of x and plug g of x in for all of our x values. So we'll have 5, 6, x minus 4 squared plus 2. We can use FOIL to simplify 6x minus 4 and we're going to end up with 5 times 36x squared minus 48x plus 16 plus 2. If we simplify that all the way, we'll end up with 180x squared minus 240x plus 82. Now for g of f of x, we're going to plug f of x in for our x value in the function for g. So we'll have 6 times the quantity 5x squared plus 2 minus 4. And that simplifies to 30x squared plus 8. So again, with composition of functions, we're just plugging in the second function that's listed into the first function for all of our values of x. Our third problem deals with difference quotients. We're given the function f of x equals negative 5x plus 4 and asked to find the difference quotient. So remember that the difference quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So our first step in solving this problem would be figuring out what f of x plus h is. So in order to find that, we just need to plug in x plus h for x and our function for f of x. So we would have negative 5x plus h plus 4, which simplifies to negative 5x minus 5h plus 4. Now we can take our value for f of x plus h and plug it back into our difference quotient. So we'll have negative 5x minus 5h plus 4 minus f of x, which is negative 5x plus 4 all over h. So since we are subtracting a negative 5x, we'll have 5x plus 5x minus 5h plus 4 
minus 4. And that's just a simplification of what we have up here. And that's all going to be over h. So our 5x's are going to cancel and our 4's are going to cancel and we will just have negative 5h over h which simplifies to our final answer of negative 5. This next problem deals with adding angles and so we have 41 degrees 8 minutes plus 77 degrees 43 minutes. So we can set this up as a simple addition problem. So we'll have 41 degrees, 8 minutes, 77 degrees, 43 minutes, and we're adding them. So this is just basic addition across. We know that 8 plus 3 is 11, carry the 1. 4 plus 1 is 5, so we have 51 minutes. 7 plus 1 is 8, and 7 plus 4 is 11. So our solution is 118 degrees and 51 minutes. Now it's important to remember that one degree equals 60 minutes. So if our minutes over here had added up to more than 60, we would have needed to carry degrees over here um, and then adjust our minutes accordingly. So that's important to remember when you're working with degrees, minutes, and seconds. Here we're given the angle measure 60 degrees, 16 minutes, and 3 seconds, and we're asked to convert, convert this degrees, minutes, seconds form into a decimal. Mm. So, first it is, first we're going to deal with converting our minutes into degrees. Um, so we know that 1 minute is equal to 1 60th of a degree. So, what we're going to do is take our 16 minutes and multiply that by 1 over 60 to get 16 sixtieths of a degree. Next, we know that 1 second is equal to 1 36 hundredth of a degree. So we're going to do the same thing like we did above, and we can say that 3 seconds times 1 over 3600 equals 3 over 3600 degrees. So then to rewrite our degree, or our angle measure in a decimal form, we can say that 60 degrees, 16 minutes, and 3 seconds is equal to 60 plus 16 over 60 plus 3 over 3600. And using a calculator to simplify all that, we get approximately 60.268 degrees. So remember, when we're working with things like this, it's really important to remember our minutes to degrees and seconds to degrees conversions. Here we're doing sort of the opposite of what we did in the previous question. We're given the angle measure 26.5344 degrees, and we're asked to write that in degrees, minutes, seconds. So in order to do that, we need to convert the decimal 0 0.5344 into minutes and seconds. So we know that one degree equals 60 minutes. So we can multiply 0 0.5344 degrees times 60 minutes and we have 32.064 minutes and now we need to take this decimal, decimal portion of our minutes and use that to find our seconds measurement. So one second, or one, yeah, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So we'll take our decimal 0 0.064, multiply that by 60, and we get approximately four seconds. So we can now rewrite our angle as 26 degrees, 32 minutes, and 4 seconds.
In this problem, we're given a value for cosecant of theta and asked to find sine theta. So in this question, it's important to remember that sine theta is equal to 1 over cosecant theta because as we know, um, cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta. So if we're given a value for cosecant of theta, all we have to do to find sine of theta is plug that value into our identity. So we say 1 over 1.576168278. Plug that into a calculator, and we have sine theta is equal to approximately 0 0.6345 as our final answer. In this question, we're told tangent of theta is greater than zero and cotangent of theta is greater than zero, and we want to know which quadrant satisfies this. So we know that in the first quadrant, all of our trig functions produce positive values. In the second quadrant, it's only sine, third, only tangent, and fourth, only cosine. So if tangent of theta is greater than zero, that means that we have to be in either quadrant one or three. And then we know for cotangent theta, since it's just the reciprocal of tangent, if that's greater than zero, we're also in quadrant one or quadrant three. So our final answer for this um, is that quadrants one and three satisfy tangent greater than zero and cotangent greater than zero. In this question, we're told that sine of theta is equal to 15 over 17 in quadrant two, and we're asked to give an exact value for cosine theta. So, in order to complete this problem, it's important to remember that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. So we can use this identity to solve for cosine theta. So if we know our value for sine squared theta, then sine, for sine theta, then for sine squared theta, we just need to say 15 over 17 squared plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So that simplifies to 225 over 289 plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now subtract 225 over 289 from both sides, and we get cosine squared theta equals 64 over 289. Then we can take the square root of both sides, and our, we have cosine theta equals positive or negative 8 over 17. Now in order to determine whether or not this value for cosine, our exact value is going to be positive or negative, we have to consider what quadrant we're in. So we're told that we're in quadrant two, and in quadrant two, only sine is positive, so our value for cosine is going to be negative eight over 17. And that is our final exact value for cosine theta. One concept that I wanna review before we finish up is coterminal angles. So a coterminal angle is an angle that differs by a multiple of 360 degrees. So it's the same angle just represented in different ways. So for example, if we're working with the angle of 130 degrees and we want to find the smallest po possible positive coterminal angle, what we're going to do is we're going to take 130 degrees and add 360 degrees for a total of 490 degrees. So these are describing the same place on a graph but as different multiples of 360 degrees. If we wanted to find um, a negative angle, then we would just subtract 360. So we'd say 130 degrees minus 360 degrees, and that would give us 230 degrees. This is the end of the second video of our test one review. It covered sample problems on functions, angles, and trig functions. 
There is one more review video to cover material for test one.